So after doing some research on Billie Eilish, watching interviews, analyzing song lyrics, and reading comments from her fans, it seems like a lot of the Billie Eilish fans are worried for her, and I think it's a topic that we should really discuss. I'm gonna die one day, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest. What does it? Everything, nothing matters. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health, and what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture and try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being, or maybe even help somebody that you know. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about Billie Eilish, but I think this is a more important discussion because it's not about Billie Eilish. Chances of her seeing this video, one in a million, right? But I wanna start a conversation because I think for us on the outside looking in, it's, I wanna bring up some topics that we should all be thinking about when it comes to helping somebody that we might know who's struggling with depression. Now, the question of the day is, is Billie Eilish depressed? I don't know. I know this might come as a shock to some of you, but I don't know Billie Eilish. I do not know Billie Eilish. But like I said, I wanna bring this up as a discussion because basically a lot of people requested for me to check out some of her other songs and lyrics and things like that. And one song that people kept recommending to me was Listen Before I Go, all right? And looking at these lyrics, it, it, it it's a troubling song, right? It's a song that a lot of people can connect to, but we're gonna show the comments in a section, or some of the comments, rather, and it has fans concerned, all right? So anyways, some of the lyrics go like this. Take me to the rooftop. I wanna see the world when I stop breathing, turning blue. Tell me love is endless. Don't be so pretentious. Leave me like you do. If you need me, wanna see me, better hurry, cause I'm leaving soon. Sorry can't save me now. Sorry I don't know how. Sorry there's no way out but down, hmm, down. So like, it, it's a song about somebody jumping off a roof, all right? And like, here's the thing. Again, I don't know Billie Eilish. I don't know if Billie Eilish is depressed. I'm gonna talk about her method of like storytelling in a minute because that brings up another topic that we need to discuss. But anyways, I'm talking from the experience of somebody who for many years, I was extremely depressed. I contemplated ending my own life and I've lost a lot of people who have taken their own life or they've died of overdoses and things like that. But it's also important to realize that a lot of us have experienced just people in the mainstream who have lost their life far, far, far too soon, all right? So anyways, as I was looking at this song on YouTube and looking through some of the comments, like I, I'm gonna do another video about Billie Eilish fans particularly and depression um, within youth. But anyways, that's what I was expecting to see in these comment section, but I saw these instead. I saw a lot of people saying that they're worried for Billie Eilish, right? And here's, here's the reason why I think this is a really important topic to discuss. So some of you saw that the other day I did a video on Linkin Park lyrics for the song Heavy and talking about Chester Bennington. So Chester Bennington, unfortunately, took his own life not that long ago. And I know there's people who are like, oh, you shouldn't comment on, you know, these things, you know, other people and their mental health and mental state. But here's the thing that I think is natural for a lot of us, especially when it comes to depression, suicide, people taking their own lives. Like, I don't know if you're like me, but a lot of us ask why, why they do it. And as somebody who grew up listening to Linkin Park and... Um, watch a lot of interviews with Chester. Like when he passed away, I started, because I hadn't listened to him in a while and I started watching all of his recent interviews. I'm like, were there any signs? Were there any clues? What what could people have done to prevent this? And and it's, it's confusing. Like something that I do as somebody trying to recover from, you know, depression and most days are pretty damn good for me. So if you are struggling with depression, like, believe me, things can get better. Now I have my ups and my downs and things like that. But what I try to do is I look at other people and I try to analyze what's working for you, what's not working for you. What can I do differently to, you know, avoid getting back into those dark thoughts. So I was, I was really interested in these Chester Bennington uh, interviews and like, it seemed like on paper, he was doing everything he was supposed to do. 
He was talking about going to therapy. He was also somebody who was back and forth in recovery, talked about going to 12 step meetings. Um, even in the music video for Heavy, you saw kind of a 12 step meeting um, setting, right? And when he passed away and, you know, there were interviews with his wife and, you know, people like Mike Shinoda, people were talking about how happy he was and like, this was so, so, so unexpected. And, and that's what, that's what messes me up because I'm sitting there and it's just like, okay, what do we do? How do we know the signs? How do we know what to look for? Right? And it's not, like I said, this isn't just necessarily Billie Eilish. But what about the people in your life? And you know, there's a question I'm asking. I don't necessarily know the answer to this, okay? And I think Billie Eilish is a great example of this because I, when I first did a video on Billie Eilish and talked about her influence and things like that, I had a lot of people saying like, you need to watch Billie Eilish interviews, you need to understand her songwriting style, you need to understand how her and her brother Phineas write songs. And it's true, a lot of her songs our stories her and Phineas create these these characters right but to me that's even it's even scarier because you're able to put on this mask whenever you want right like I would imagine so I'm a father I have a 10 year old son he's gonna be a teenager soon being a teenager is rough a lot of symptoms of you know mental health issues can pop up during teenage years and I think about that as a father but like Billie Eilish has positioned herself to wear this mask whenever she wants to, okay? And what I mean by that is she can make these dark lyrics and talk about very personal experiences, but if anyone were to talk to her about it and say like, are you okay? I'm worried about you. She could put the mask on and say, oh no, I was just creating a character. That's not me. I'm not in that dark place. That was the character I was talking about. And that's something very concerning because a lot of people with depression put on a mask. I can share from my personal experience, from the outside looking in, a lot of people didn't understand how, how tormented I was inside, inside my own mind. Because outwardly I could wear this smile all over the place. And part of it was, part of depression, and I don't know if you can relate to this, is my brain would tell me, oh, people don't care about me. Nobody's asking me how I'm doing. Why aren't people coming to me and asking me, how are you doing, Chris? And I came to realize later that they didn't have a reason to. Like, you could look at me, you could look and like, I looked like happy, I was making jokes, I was going to work every day or going to school every day back in high school. So for someone to ask me that would be very out of the ordinary because I wasn't giving off any signs or symptoms. So. That's one of the troubling things about dealing with these mental health issues is that we, we have to reach out and ask for help. We have to do that because a lot of us are good at putting on that mask, you know what I mean? So my suggestion to you, what's worked for me is I have to fight that inner voice that tells me that nobody cares about me. I had to take responsibility and accountability for my own depression and I had to start reaching out to other people. I had to start going to other people and saying, hey, I'm not okay right now, can you talk? You know what I mean? Like I had to do that because I couldn't constantly put that expectation on other people. So the other thing is too, it's like, and there's a question I wanna ask you that I don't necessarily know the answer to, like at what level do we get concerned? So some of you who've been around my channel for a while, you know that I worked at a um, dual diagnosis treatment center, we specialize in addiction uh, for people who have mental health issues as well. And I remember this this young man, he got really, he was very quiet, introverted, shy, didn't talk much, and he got into it with his therapist one day. And me and this kid had a really good connection, right? Like he would come in and talk to me and everything like that. Him and his therapist got into it one day and she came over and she saw him drawing in his notebook in the treatment center and he was drawing like uh, a scene of him killing her, right? And like when you're working in that type of treatment center, it's like, how seriously do you take this? Like, how do you take this thing, right? Was he just drawing something to let out his frustrations, which is completely normal, or just something to be concerned about, right? And everything ended up turning out all right. That kid's actually been sober for a while now. I talked to him probably not that long ago, but maybe in the last few months. But anyways, it's just something that I wanna like bring up as a topic of conversation, because there are people in your life who might be struggling and you don't even know it. So although I was talking about how people need to reach out and ask for help, and I hope if 
if Billie Eilish is depressed, she has people in her life who she can talk to. But like on on the other end of things, I think it's a good common practice to like just sit down with like people in your life and just say, hey, how's it going? Like, how, how are you really doing, right? Not that just kind of like in passing, like, hey, what's up, how are you doing? But like, really ask them like, what's going on in your life? How are you doing? How are you feeling about this? You know, if something happens to that person, like, or they have a rough day, like ask them like, how are you feeling about this? And see if you can open up that conversation. Because one of the main goals of this channel is just to start opening up that conversation and having it normalized so we can start talking to each other and helping each other, all right? But anyways, let let me know all your thoughts down below on this topic. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And in case you missed it, go over to Patreon. I just put up the Q&A answers, so make sure that you go check that out, all right? Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.